top eight here this weekend. And he was a winner in Richmond two years ago in 2016. We'll see if he can get another title as we head over to Steven Borkov, who will play a hollow to found and untapped via the flooded strand. He'll fall down to 17. And let's see if it's going to be a Vile or a Mausoleum Wanderer here. And it will be Vile, a great card against blue-white control. Definitely. Uh, allows to play very effectively at instant speed, avoids a lot of counter spells. I think a problem in, in this matchup here for Borokov's side is that Felicetti is playing a build built around Terminus. That's a card that things like Spellcrawler and Mausoleum Wanderer don't interact that effectively with. This will be a Mutavolt, which is a pretty good card against blue-white control. Yes, they do have Field of Ruin, but that's the kind of card that does demand an answer. And it looks like we may have a second Vile here. So while Blue White Spirits does not take advantage of Ether Vile as well as Humans does, then again, few decks do, it is still a problematic card here for Blue White Control because you get to play on their turn, which is something they generally do not enjoy. Vials will go up to 2-1 and one as we head back over to Steven. He's picked up a copy of Selfless Spirit. Here's another copy of Mutavolt. Feels very Merfolk-esque. Yep. A little bit. Less in terms of power for mana. Merfolk does that very well. But your creatures are a bit more disruptive and a bit harder to kill. Here comes Mutavolt. So, I guess remains to be seen. Where I'm at is, structurally, it seems like Blue-White Spirits would have a good matchup here because you're playing this instant speed game. Your creatures aren't the easiest to kill. You can you have creature lands, all that. This is, this is all historically really good stuff to have against control decks. My my concern here, and maybe I'll be proven wrong, is the card quality just seems too low. Okay. Okay. You may be proven wrong. Well, we uh, yeah, for sure. We felt that when he was playing against Hollow One. I mean, you can see it's already you know this is uh, for, from Felicetti's perspective, it's kind of annoying. His counter spells don't work. He has to play around a million different things. Let's see what we have here. Now, I like this play. So what he's going to do is he's going to activate the Muta Vault that was being targeted by Field of Ruin and then flash in a Rattle Chains, and Rattle Chains will counter the Field of Ruin. Right. I think that, that play from Felicetti there is just a non-starter. Like, sure. It, it's just... It, I, I don't think Borokov's exposing his Muta Vault in that spot unless he has a Rattle Chains to flash in, and now you've just... Stone Rain yourself and allowed Borkarov to use his his vial very efficiently. And don't forget, he was Ted was targeting the other Muta Vault, not the one that attacked. But it's, it's still the same thing. It's still thing. the same it, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not playing around anything yeah. that way. Here's a detention sphere. Well. We'll see if this will resolve. It's gonna target Vial. Mausoleum Wander is gonna be Viled in, and now Detention Sphere will take care of two vials. So we head back over to Steven now, who's built up a nice little battlefield. Keep in mind as we take a look at Mausoleum Wanderer. It's a card that counters instants and sorceries, if memory does serve. Yeah, it's got that Judge's Familiar style. It does not counter enchantments or artifacts, anything like that. Whenever another spirit enters the battlefield under your control, however, Mausoleum Wanderer gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, so it can attack for more than one point of damage. Not something that you can really say about old Judge's Familiar. Ted with a pretty full hand here, but again, his cards didn't interact appropriately. Now, fortunately for Ted, Detention Sphere did show up and took care of Vile, and that's really, really important. Uh, boy, well, you said you wanted to die roll in that burn matchup. You got it, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have found Hollow One to be their best draws. You know, forget about it. You can't do anything about it. Yep. But if they have a normal draw, uh, I felt pretty comfortably ahead. Well, Quinn... Tanoli wins his match real fast. My goodness, this here is a cryptic command, which Mausoleum Wanderer could counter. It was going to be tap draw. Wanderer does a nice job of countering this, obviously. Ted playing in the face of Mausoleum Wanderer, knowing that it can get countered, and it does. So for Quintanoli, by the way, as Rattle Chains is going to come in here for two, he takes care of Steven Nagy very quickly, two games to zero. Congratulations to our burned player. Moving on to the semis to play the winner of this match. is now there as a Supreme Phantom. Keep in mind you can play your spirits at instant speed when Rattle Chains is on the battlefield. Before blocks. Here's a Celestial Colonnade. This is a search for his Kanta. Pass the turn back. Will Ted to Steven. Ted in a little bit of trouble here. I mean, a land and, and uh, Borokov can attack for lethal. Is he so willing? Is there anything that he cares to play around in this instance? I mean, fire it up. Cantrip into Terminus. Yeah. Here come the beatdowns. That's an attack for seven. Three from the Rattle Chains, three from the Muta Vault. 
One from the Supreme Phantom, and that's going to get the job done. So Steven Borokov will win game number one here over Ted Felicetti. Ted really couldn't get anything off the ground. You saw the Detention Sphere take care of the Vials. However, you saw Mausoleum Wanderer take care of the Cryptic Command. And actually, the fact that that Field of Ruin ended up just being placed into the graveyard with no use. Set him back. Yeah, that, I'm not sure, you know, how does the game turn out if Felicetti doesn't do that play. Unclear, but it definitely didn't help. Well, we're going to take a look here at our sideboards. And we are going to start with Ted Felicetti, who's got three Leyline of Sanctity, two to spell, two Rest in Peace, two Stony Silence, six one of Seer and Disdainful Stroke, Lyra Dawnbringer, Negate Settle the Wreckage, Surgical Extraction, and Timely Reinforcements. Talk to me. Uh, I think the best card that he has in his sideboard is his copy of Lyra. It's just a dominating creature on the battlefield. Um, better than three or four Borkov's creatures on the table at the same time. Uh, the Settle the Wreckage, the Timely Reinforcements, it's not great here because Borkov is still is so much in the air, but I still think it's Worth bringing in. Over here for Steven, we do two Dampening Spheres, two Rest in Peace, two Stony Silence, two Unified Will. Let's do seven one ofs with Bless the Lions, Disenchant, Echoing Truth, Engineer Explosive, Settle the Wreckage, Vendillion Click, and a Warship. A little bit light on the sideboard here, but uh, Borkov's doing most of his work game one. Uh, the Vendillion Click, the Echoing Truth, and the uh, two copies of Unified Will is where I would go. And that's a pretty easy swap. You can just take out the paths. Well, those are the options there for each player in game number two going to be underway here in just a moment. Ted Felicetti will be on the play, though he was on the play in game number one. And it did not lead to a victory, so we'll see if he can tie things up here in just a moment. But before we do that, we turn our attention to this, the StarCityGames.com weekly sale, where you, yes you, have got a little bit of time left to save 10% off of all non-English singles. And you can head over to go.starcygames.com slash weekly sale once a week to be checking back to see what the new sale is. Uh, it goes live Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, which is not too much time, so make sure to be heading back there tomorrow to see the new category. Well, those are the options there for both players, as we mentioned. And now they will shuffle up and get ready here for game number two. Again, Quinn Tanoli has already won his match here over Stephen Nagy. Didn't waste any time. Did Burn taking care of Hollow One? We do have updates on our other side of the bracket and other matches. Of course, we'll let you know. Annalise Faustino playing Tron against Tyler Fenstermaker playing Humans. That's our two versus seven. And then Daniel Will with Dredge against Benjamin Nikolic playing Jeskai, a very innovative build of Jeskai. I recommend you do take a look at those top eight deck lists when you do have some time. As Nikolic, a Jeskai master, already won in open one Jeskai control earlier this year. And uh, he's back at it again here with his favorite control deck. Settle the wreckage. Mega popular, man. Yeah. Mega, mega popular. And a good pairing to have three minutes to settle the wreckages going up against Dredge. Both these players will shuffle up and get ready here for game number two. We'll take a moment to learn a little bit more about Ted Felicetti if we can. Sugarloaf PA. I didn't know there was a sugar. I didn't know. There, there's it's really sure, also Sugarloaf? There's only, to me, there's only one Sugarloaf. Yeah, of course there's only the one. You would think. There's a, I, I guess there could be a second Sugarloaf. Are you positive it's Sugarloaf? The, get off me. Oh, it's one word. That's different, right? I thought the other, is it the other one, <laughs> two words? I don't know. Ask Reed or Boswell, man. Whatever. <laughs> 34 years old. Fake Sugarloaf. Yeah, from fake Sugarloaf PA. This will be his fifth open top eight with one win in Richmond two years ago. He's the booking agent for the Atari Screeching Weasel, the Queers, and Richie Ramon. Performed for eight consecutive years on the Vans Warp Tour. Rest in peace to that fun tour. And then lives at a funeral home, which is just creepy. Maybe. I don't know. It's probably creepy, dude. How can it not be? It's a funeral home. It could be totally fine. Yeah, it's probably just fine. Celestial Colony is exactly where Ted is going to start. Blue Light Control is starting to pick up in some popularity here in modern. Mark Harborholz did win a PTQ. Yes. Yeah, I know you're pumped about that. Yes. He's back on the Pro Tour. He got it done with Blue Light Control. He wrote an article for Star City Games last week on the premium side about that victory and his build of the deck. So if you do want to learn more about that deck, you can feel free to do so. Here is a search for his content from Ted. See how Ted's list compares to Mark's. Either way you slice it, this deck is very popular and very good. As we head back over to Steven, who's playing the lesser-known deck of the two in Blue-White Spirits. A lot of people opt for the Bant variety to get a little splash there for Noble Hierarch, Birds of Paradise, and maybe even a little... Uh, Collective company action is here as a Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, going to be placed into the graveyard from Search for his Kanta.
That's an island. And that'll be it for Ted here. However, there's a path to exile in the upkeep. Two mana. Before the counter gets placed on the vial. And you see a hand here for Steven that has many a rattle chain in it. But rattle chain doesn't work with Thalia, obviously. No. Looks like uh, Borokov, uh, going through his deck there, has brought in a copy of Disenchant. Take care of D-Sphere. Maybe some other cards. Yeah. It's yeah. a good one to kill, too. Search for Wisconsin is this weird card, right, where it's the kind of card where you look at it. Like, rest in peace. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a graveyard deck, you obviously want to kill. Rest in peace. You look at Search for Wisconsin, it's like, well, I mean, I could kill it. It's not that big of a deal. And it's like, I think you absolutely need to kill it. Yeah. It's a really big deal. These kind of enchantments that don't have huge effects right away, but have some effects over time. Search for Wisconsin at the very top of that list. Those things are worth killing. I mean, just having more mana is valuable from Felicetti's side, and if the game is at neutral, if Borkov's not applying any pressure, then the flipped search for his contest is game over. Yeah. Violent 2, Cavern Naming Spirit there for Steven. That's a Flooded Strand. And we'll sacrifice a Flooded Strand. All right, here's Rattle Chains through the Vile. And now one tap. Vile likely to stay on two. And I take it back, it's actually going to slide up to three. No one likes to stay on two a lot with this deck, though there are some good three mana cards to put through the Vile. Here comes Rattle Chains. Borkov looks pretty comfortable here in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, he's doing his thing. He's a, he's a little bit slower out of the gate in this game than he was in the first game, which makes me a little nervous. Here is a Rest in Peace. Cryptic Command is going to try to stop that one. And Unified Will is going to stop the Cryptic Command. So, rest in peace will resolve. Graveyards are gone. And that means that Search for Wisconsin will have a very difficult time transforming. Yep. And also make Snapcaster Mage significantly worse. Now, this is going to make life very difficult for Steven because that is a Lyra Dawnbringer. Yeah, we're going to see real quick here if Borokov has kept in any copies of Path to Exile mm -hmm. because uh, it look, appears as though he's brought in Echoing Truth which is a temporary answer, but not good enough in the long term with Felicetti having so much life to play with. And this is a card that you can't spell, Queller and Lyra Dawnbringer. And as you mentioned, Echoing Truth is a temporary answer. But if you're Echoing Truthing this now and attacking for two, who cares? Yeah, it doesn't matter. This, I believe, to be Felicetti's best card in the sideboard. Angels are a great place to go against Blue Light Spirits for how tricky they can be, and you have to maneuver around all those tricks. Sometimes... Brute force works. They just don't have a lot of numbers. Yeah. And so just putting big stuff on the battlefield is not a bad way to approach the matchup. This will be a Mausoleum Wanderer here from Steven. Here's a Vial for three. This will be a Vendue. I'm surprised here. Trigger on the stack. Okay, there it is. I was wondering if he was going to do this, which is trigger on the stack, echoing truth this. And then that'll be the card that I take and put away. Oh, great. Yeah, that's a great line then. You see the hand here. Snapcaster Mage, Hollow Fountain go away. New card coming. This, I mean, Ted's hand right now doesn't matter. It's here comes Rattle Chains. Yeah, it's Snapcaster Mage, which is just nothing mm -hmm. at this point. Can't block anything. Can't flash back a spell. Oh. Terminus is brutal. Steven was building up such a nice battlefield here. And, of course, we're going to see him use the Mausoleum Wanderer. Ted is going to, of course, pay. The rest of these creatures will go to the bottom. The follow-up is Stony Silence. There's a Hollow Fountain tap past the turn back. Stony Silence obviously good against Vile. I don't think much past that in Spirits. Yeah, I mean, the, the spells in the deck are just four Vile, four Path. The sideboard contains an explosives, no, basically no artifacts. Sure. But. You'll see Searcher Esconta mill away Celestial Colonnade. And it looks like Ted's feeling confident enough to attack here for four points of damage. The follow-up is an island. Snapcaster Mage still in hand here for Ted. That'll be a rattle chains on the end step for Steven. How about two of them? He'll untap, and he will leave that vial on three and draw a card. In for four comes our Spirits player. Ted's going to fall down to ten. And now here's Snapcaster Mage. These players, 
are just going to start getting aggressive with their creatures, try to kill the other person as best they can. Perhaps Ted slows down with the colonnade activations, though. He has a lot of control over the way this game gets raced. He can either race or just hang back on D and shut down all of Borokov's attackers. And that'll be a Moreland Haunt. Not great with Rest in Peace, as this will be a colonnade activation. That is a Path to Exile. Okay. You wondered if he left them in. The answer is yes. However, a Path to Exile there from Ted will take care of one of the Rattle Chains. So both players are going to search up a basic. Two damage will be dealt. We'll be heading back over to Ted in just a moment. Yeah. So good for Felicity to know that left in some number of paths, probably not the full four. Mm -hmm. Also, from Felicity's perspective, he now gets to shuffle the Lyra back into the deck. Yeah, I was thinking about that, too. The fact that Lyra is an option now to be drawn where it was just on the bottom of the deck before is a pretty big deal. And Searcher's Contact can certainly help to get to the powerful Angel. That would have been a game ender except for that Echoing Truth. We're going to go back over to Ted now. Glacial Fortress, he doesn't need one of those. Didn't get a great look at what he drew. But I'd be surprised if he slowed down with the attacking. Here's the attack for two. I think he's got to get rid of that Moreland Haunt. Oh, I, I, never mind. No, yeah, yeah, rest yeah. in peace. Never mind. No graveyards. Excuse me. Here's an attack for two. Looks like Ted, whatever he found, he's going to keep this card, too. Here's an opt. Gives him a little bit better selection. He'll take that card, and now he he'll tell a little time. See if this resolves. And it appears as though it will. Steven's going to take a look at telling time, and we can too. I believe original Ravnica? Yes. So we can set Terminus on top, Snapcaster Mage to hand, Flooded Strand to the bottom, and then has the option of... Uh, keeping the Terminus or just cycling through it with Search for His Content next turn. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. There are options. Options aren't bad. Telling time done resolving here. So Ted's got a setup that he appears to be happy with, though I am curious about exactly what's going on in his hand at this stage. Well, that's a pretty good one there in Timely Reinforcement. Sure, it's just gain six, but it is a pretty good card. Here's Mausoleum Wanderer. Of course, that can't be played with Flash because of the rattle chains. Your follow-up now is another copy of Mausoleum Wander. Play that pre-combat to deal another point of damage. A really good Terminus. Yes, it will be. Ted set it up beautifully with that telling time, and that's going to clear everything away. Now, fellas, said these leftovers are Snapcaster Mage in hand, I assume. And the, uh, the Azkanta siphoning his draw a little mm -hmm. bit. So not a lock by any means, but a good position. He has the Lycus position, but as you mentioned, definitely not a lock. Some cards can show up here for Steven that are quite good, as Steven will draw a card past the turn back. There's a Snapcaster Mage, just a 2-1 Ambush Viper, as most people call it. Ted, not interested in Terminus. He'll put that into the graveyard from the search for his Kanta. Now here's an Opt. He'll play that right away. Take a look at that top card. He'll keep it in for two. Steven's going to fall down to six. Steven will draw a card in the draw step, and Dillion Click has shown up. Keep in mind, the vial can't be used now because of the stony silence. We take a look, and it's a vial and muta vault. Yep, keep those. That's game. You can field of ruin the muta vault. You and sure can. Lethal. And that's exactly what Ted will do, and that'll take care of it. Ted Felicelli is going to tie things up here against Steven Borokov. Blue-white control, blue-white spirits. They're going to get ready for a third and final one here. You saw on Ted's side, did bring in that copy of Timely Reinforcements. We saw at least one stony silence. Rest in peace, he's, of course, not going to bring in, but we know that Steven did. And then, of course, the Lyra Dawnbringer is in the deck. Maybe the Settle of the Wreckage is in now, too, after the sideboard. It wouldn't surprise me if Felicetti's approach, because, uh, you know, the Stony Silence is so narrow, you, you wouldn't think about bringing in against a deck that has just four vials. People, people typically don't bring in against humans. I wonder if Felicetti's approach here is just all my counter spells are so bad because of Vile, because of Cavern, because of Mausoleum Wanderer, because they're not very good to begin with. 
that uh, he's just cut every single counter spell for nothing but proactive plays. On Steven's side, again, I'm not sure how much changes for him. We saw the unified will. We saw Vendil uh, yeah, we saw the Vendillion click. We saw at least one unified will. You saw the disenchant when he was shuffling, which is all well and good. Both players with some decent options to bring to the battlefield. Uh, for Annalise Faustino, a win yet again for our Tron player. She wins 2-0 over Tyler Fenstermaker, who was playing humans. For, so for Annalise, she moves on to the semifinals. going to be playing the winner of Daniel Will, playing Dredge against Benjamin Nikolic, playing Jeskai. And do remember that Annalise has already defeated Nikolic once in this tournament. Mm -hmm. So that could be a rematch. Maybe perhaps Nikolic gets a little revenge, or Annalise says, well, I just don't think you can beat me. I'd love to play against you again. That could be the case as well. And I think whatever happens, I don't think Annalise would mind playing against either one of these decks in the finals if she does make it that far, or if either one of these players make it that far. It'll be interesting to see. It will be interesting to see. I think the uh, the humans, the, sorry, the spirits matchup might be problematic uh, because there is a little bit of disruption, and uh, the deck is a little bit disruptive, I think, in some ways that are good against Tron. But a card that I've seen Tron weirdly struggle with over the years is Mutavolt. It's just kind of randomly uh, annoying Thorn at times. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Just watched. I've watched Tron struggle mightily with that card in spots that were really weird. Now, that has often met, uh, emerged out of Merfolk, mm -hmm. and it's a different case because Merfolk is so much faster than Spirits, and it's spreading seeds as part of the equation too. So True. That, that matchup is so just naturally so much worse. But the card Mutavolt is just, there's spots where Tron just like kind of, it looks ahead and just randomly can't beat it. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of annoying. Right. You can't Oblivion Stone it away. It is something that you have to kind of Karn away or Ulamog away. Though, it is worth noting that Tron has gotten some updates there in Walking Ballista. De definitely, yeah. yeah. There's some new cards, you know, but the Planeswalkers don't touch it. Your Oblivion Stone doesn't touch it. And sometimes that's, those are the cards you're using to manage the game, so. Both players going to lay out seven, and Steven Bor Borko will be on the play here for our third and final one. Decide who's going to be moving on to the semifinals here in just a moment. Looks like Steven's going to keep Ted, will not. So while Ted shuffles and gets ready to take a look at six, we're going to talk about the StarCityGames.com YouTube page one final time. Well, there's a lot going on over there, obviously, up to and including the Versus series with Brad Nelson, Todd Anderson, Todd Stevens, Ross Merriam, and a whole bunch more. Yeah, you can subscribe today over at youtube.com slash starcitygames uh, for free. Become one of over 130,000 subscribers. Uh, a lot of great content up there. Fall Swords, Versus series, Commander Versus, Flashback, Best of the SCG Tour, and much more. Again, you can subscribe today at youtube.com slash starcitygames for zero dollars and zero cents. That's a lot. And then just spend your time just browsing through videos of some of your favorite people and least favorite people <laughs> playing Magic the Gathering. There you go. That's <laughs> nice. Way to, way to bring that full circle sometimes all the way Sometimes I want to watch the people I like, and sometimes I want to watch the people I do not like. Wow. There and you the YouTube page has it all. It has, it has everything. Without naming names. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. That's your best sell of subscribing to YouTube yet. Yeah. In all the years, that's your best one. I think looks like Ted's headed down to five cards. So we've kind of had, I, I think, two games so far sort of emblematic of the matchup. Uh, game one, uh, the fact that Borkov kept Felicetti off balance, the fact that Felicetti's reactive cards just didn't work the right way against Spirits allowed Borkov to cruise to a pretty easy victory. In game number two, we saw that Felicetti is playing with more powerful Magic the Gathering cards than Borkov is, and that pretty much determined the game. Yep. And now we're on to game three, where Felicetti is going to be starting at a major deficit on five cards. We begin with a Mutavolt and a Vile. It's a nice start here for Steven. It's an island here for Ted. Vile's up to one. Steven will draw a card. Picked up a copy of Rest in Peace. It's another non-basic. This time it's Cavern, and now there's Supreme Phantom. Opt will be the play. Ted will keep that card. Now he'll draw for the turn. 
There's a Plains, and now this is a Stony Silence. So Ted has done a nice job of shutting off the Vile, though there will be a response. Mausoleum Wander will come in. Mausoleum Wander currently a two-power creature given the Supreme Phantom as we head back over to Steven. Steven's going to serve in here for three. Now keep in mind with the, the Lord plus a Mausoleum Wanderer, uh, Borokov can potentially win a fight against uh, Terminus, so uh -huh. that roll off the top here. Celestial Colony is going to roll in. Let's see what the play is here. It will be a copy of Rattle Chains. Will there be a response? No and no. So Steven will untap Vile. Eh, it's going to go up to three. That's fun. That's Keep in mind, he does have Echoing Truth in his deck, so he can Echoing Truth the Stony Silence. For now, he's just going to get in here for let's make it three, four, five, six points of damage. Ted's going to fall down to 11. Boom. Telling time, huh? You want to tell a little time? And there's a Terminus, and uh, the way things look right now, uh, the Wanderer only at two power, you could resolve it. Here is Terminus. Rattle chains. <laughs> and this is an uh, effort here to pump the Wanderer to a power where now this successfully counters the Terminus. And it looks like that did work. We're going to confirm the life totals here very quickly because I'm pretty sure Ted last turn took six. That is my count. And then he took three the pre he took three the previous turn. Yeah, that sounds right to me. No, he took two the previous turn, right? Because he just played the. Oh yeah, yeah. The wanderer, the wanderer got the the pump from the its own trigger plus the mm -hmm. plus one plus one, right? Okay, so they're just going to confirm the life totals here very quickly. We want to make sure that they're right. And then play will continue. So it's 11. And then now Ted's going to go down to 9 from the untapped hollowed fountain. Just want to make sure our game states are correct, especially in the top 8. And especially a game where this could definitely come down to 2 points. Every life point, point matters, eight. yeah. Here we go. We head back over to Steven. Fellow said he's stabilizing at one is not the hardest thing to imagine Absolutely happening. Absolutely not. Here's a Vendillion click. Let's take a look. Rest in peace, rest in peace, Thalia, Drogskull Captain. Now that cavern is naming Spirit. So that's why Thalia hasn't been played. Obviously, rest in peace. There's no planes or any white producing man on the battlefield in Drogskull Captain. Well, can't cast it yet. Yeah, so. he's just got to keep it. I mean, that's a threatening hand, but he can't cast the stuff. And if you give him a draw into being able to cast the Captain or the Thalia, it's so bad. that uh -huh. It's dangerous, and it's bad if Borokov draws the right land, but I think it's what it's got to be. Well, Ted needs to peel Terminus. If he does, he's right back in this thing. That's a Glacial Fortress. Now, I think Ted may have opt in hand. Right, so he can opt on Borokov's turn and hope to Miracle he Terminus. I actually way. think he has Settle, too. If he has Settle, then he doesn't even need the opt. Now this is interesting. Yeah, this is this is it. How do you attack? Um. There's opt. You attack this way. You turn on path to exile. Yeah, but I don't think uh, Borokov. If he gets path, that's kind of whatever. He loses his whole board to settle. That's really bad. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Ted's gonna think with the opt here. Again, this is, comes down to that point being so significant. Borokov being able to tender a lethal attack with just one attacker is a huge difference for the way this game looks. Now here's Settle the Wreckage. Only going to get one creature as opposed to the whole squad. Again, for those of you just joining us here this weekend, or those of you who have been with us for a while, Settle the Wreckage has been very popular all weekend long in the control decks that we have seen. Ted will draw a card. If he can find Lear Dawnbringer, he's doing great. If he finds a land and turn on Colonnade, he's doing okay, which it looks like he does have a land. So there's a Field of Ruin. We pass back over to Steven, who will draw.
Steven's going to get in here with both creatures. He'll animate the colonnade. Is there a path here? Nope. What do we got? We got a Supreme Phantom with Flash to deal the extra point of damage, and that is going to do it. Steven Borokov is going to win this game and match here over Ted Felicetti as Spirits is going to take down Blue White Control. And for you Blue White Spirits fans, or even you Band Spirit fans, moving on to the semi.